The metal in your hand right now was more valuable than gold a century ago. That soda can you're holding, your laptop casing, the foil in your kitchen. They're made from metal so rare in 1850 that Napoleon III reserved aluminum plates for his most honored guests, while everyone else ate off gold. Here's what nobody tells you. Aluminum is the most common metal in Earth's crust. It's everywhere. In clay, in rocks, in dirt. But for thousands of years, humans couldn't extract it. Not because we lacked the metal, because we lacked the electricity. Why does aluminum never rust despite being more reactive than iron? How did one invention drop its price 95% in 20 years? And what makes recycling one can save enough energy to power your laptop for three hours? Let's explore the process. Aluminum is locked in stone, specifically bauxite, reddish rocks rich in aluminum oxide. The ore is common. Australia has mountains of it, but the aluminum won't come out. You can't just heat bauxite like iron ore. The aluminum oxygen bond is too strong. Heat alone can't break it. For millennia, humans held aluminum-rich clay without accessing the metal inside. We made pottery from it, built with it, walked on it. The aluminum was always there. We couldn't see it. Then, in 1886, a 22-year-old named Charles Hall tried something different. But here's where it gets interesting. Hall discovered that if you dissolve aluminum oxide in molten cryolite at 1,000 degrees, then run massive electrical current through it, something remarkable happens. Electricity rips oxygen from aluminum at the atomic level. Pure aluminum settles to the bottom as liquid metal. This process, electrolysis, changed everything. Aluminum became cheap. Price collapsed 95% in two decades. That's why you drink from aluminum cans. Why planes fly. Why your phone weighs grams instead of kilograms. One discovery made the most common metal accessible. Here's what happens inside an aluminum smelter. And why recycling one can saves energy equivalent to half a gallon of gasoline. Aluminum production starts with mining bauxite. They crush it and wash with hot sodium hydroxide. This dissolves aluminum oxide while leaving impurities. The solution gets filtered and purified into white powder. But that's still not aluminum. It's aluminum locked to oxygen. Breaking that bond requires massive energy. They dissolve the powder in molten cryolite at 1,000 degrees. Then submerge carbon electrodes and pump in electricity, enough to power 15,000 homes. You probably think recycling is about landfill space. Everyone does. But here's what's happening. Producing new aluminum from ore requires enormous electricity. Recycling melts existing metal, skipping electrolysis. Same aluminum, 5% of the energy. That's why each recycled can save enough electricity to run your laptop three hours. Not because aluminum is special, because extracting it from bauxite ore is brutally energy intensive. Electrical current flowing through molten cryolite tears aluminum and oxygen apart at the molecular level. Aluminum ions gain electrons, becoming pure metal. The liquid aluminum, denser than cryolite, sinks to the bottom. They drain it off every few hours, glowing at 1,000 degrees. Oxygen travels to carbon anodes, combining to create CO2 that bubbles away. The anodes slowly burn away, requiring replacement every few weeks. This is why aluminum production clusters near hydroelectric dams. Electricity demand is so massive that smelters need cheap power to survive. Your recycled can saves both energy and emissions. The molten aluminum gets refined further. They bubble chlorine gas through it, binding to impurities and floating them to the surface. Then they add specific elements based on use. Add magnesium for strength. Add silicon for casting. 
add copper for aerospace. The resulting alloy gets cast into massive ingots or poured directly into continuous casting for sheet coils. Aircraft aluminum is fundamentally different from can aluminum, engineered at atomic level for specific properties. Aluminum never rusts. That sounds wrong. Aluminum is more reactive than iron, but aluminum corrodes instantly. The moment it touches air, it reacts with oxygen. Within nanoseconds, aluminum oxide forms on the surface, incredibly thin but sealed. It prevents further oxygen from reaching metal underneath. Iron rusts because iron oxide is porous. Aluminum oxide is sealed. Corrosion stops at the surface. This is why aluminum boats don't rust in salt water. Why wiring lasts decades. The metal corrodes once, then stops. But wait! Aluminum's dominance isn't because it's the lightest structural metal. We've developed lighter materials. Magnesium alloys, carbon fiber, titanium. Aluminum dominates because it's the lightest structural metal we can produce at scale for reasonable cost. A commercial airplane needs 60 tons. Carbon fiber would cost 200 million. Aluminum costs 4 million. That difference is why you can afford to fly. Every time you hold a laptop, drink from a can, or board a plane, you're trusting engineers who learn to harness electricity to break atomic bonds. You're trusting instant oxidation that creates invisible protection. You're trusting that someone figured out electrochemistry that heat alone couldn't achieve. That can in your hand isn't just recyclable. It's precisely engineered, either designed for maximum recyclability or cheapened to minimum specs. You can tell by whether it dents easily. So, that common metal that was once rarer than gold. Aluminum isn't about rarity anymore. It's about seeing the invisible infrastructure, the electricity flowing through smelters, the instant oxide barrier forming on every surface, the stored energy in every discarded can waiting to be recovered. You notice the engineering choices now, not just the shiny surface. Maybe you'll pause before throwing away that can because you're someone who sees value where others see trash. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work, one story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, trust the process.